Okay, A-level economics. It's part of the social sciences faculty, economics, it falls into the business area. Um, some of the courses which are available within the faculty are obviously A-level economics. A-level business, which sometimes is quite popular to do alongside of the economics A-level as well. We have the extended certificate in business, which is a vocational course with less exams and more coursework, um, which would be the equivalent of one A-level, which can be done alongside other A-levels. And we have the extended diploma, which would be a full-time course. So that would be purely business. Okay, there's a good uptake on all of those. And we do have A-level economics students who put the A-level economics alongside the A-level business and the extended certificate in business. Other subjects within the faculty include travel and tourism, law, French, Spanish, psychology and criminology. So we will be on the top floor of the P block at the college. So what we're going to concentrate on today then is why would you study economics? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the issues that come up in economics, but also I'm going to link these to what is going on at the moment in terms of the lockdown and all of the issues with regard to coronavirus and COVID-19. Okay, the first one then, how will business customers be affected by Brexit? Right, there's been a lot of talk about Brexit, a lot of information about Brexit. Okay, and this has been going on for two or three years now. Um, we will be coming out of the European Union, but even now, okay, we, we are not out of the European Union. We're still in for, um, for a negotiated settlement by the end of this year. Linking this into COVID, just to show that economics does change from day to day, week to week. Then, in terms of in terms of the COVID effect on this, and um, they're talking now already about a possible extension to the thirty uh, first of December, because of the lockdown and the effect it's had on the economy in the UK. In, we are going to be in a in, in a fairly bad position when we come out of of the lockdown and it may affect the negotiations. There are some economists who believe that we should come out with or without a deal, okay, from the European Union, and there are some economists who believe that we need a, a negotiated settlement. A lot of our trade is with the European Union, a hell of a lot of our trade is with the European Union, so we, we do rely on European goods coming into this country and us trading our goods with Europe. It's a big market for us. So that will affect um, the decisions that will be taken between now and the end of the year. OK, the next one then, the unconditional basic income. At the moment, the UK government has been paying, uh, we're talking billions of pounds have been paid out to subsidise people's wages across the country, workers' wages. Um, you've, I presume you've heard of the furloughing scheme where 80% of your salary is paid by the government. Some people have had their salaries topped up by the other 20% by their employer. Others uh, have been furloughed and they're just getting the 80% which is being paid by the government. Small businesses in particular find it very, very difficult to pay their staff in, t in times like this. It's a big, big, what we would call a fixed cost on the business, okay? And if they had to pay that during the lockdown, it would mean many, many of them going into, into liquidation. So that's the first thing. In terms of the COVID and the effect that, that that's had on whether we should have an unconditional basic income, it may be that we're going to have a very high unemployment rate for a few years to come because of the effect that COVID has had on the economy and the demand for, for goods within the economy. So therefore, the, the goods need to be produced by um, businesses. If there's no demand there, there's no demand for that particular business or there's less demand and they need less staff. There are going to be problems in, in the future. OK, hopefully, we, we, as some economists might say, we're going to have a big, strong bounce back and things are going to improve um, very quickly. Other economists believe it could take three to five years before we get anywhere near the, le the level of income that we've got at the moment in terms of the economy. OK, the next one then, is there a future for cash? You may or may not have noticed that most businesses during the lockdown do not want to accept cash. They see card 
uh, payments has been easier, quicker, and also um, less susceptible to, to passing on the virus. In Sweden, uh, which is one of the leading countries in terms of the uh, in terms of use of plastic rather than cash, they, they said that only about 10% of uh, transactions actually take place in cash. They are a very plastic dominated uh, economy in Sweden. We may well go that way. People have got into the habit now possibly of paying much more with plastic. I know the younger generation uh, we're doing it anyway to some extent, a lot higher extent than the older generation. But again, this could have a big effect on some businesses. Okay, market traders, uh, street traders, etc. You know, will, may, may find it very, very difficult to move over to a plastic-dominated um, transactions. So therefore, you know, they, they do need the Wi-Fi. They do need to be able to, you know, the 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 have the I in place to be able to, to um, supplement those transactions. So again, that's a big issue again, which has been affected by the COVID. Okay, in terms of the economics, so that's a little bit about why you would uh, want to study economics. In terms of economics in the course, <clears throat> there are two aspects of economics. Number one is microeconomics. Okay, in microeconomics, we look much more at, at kind of individual decisions and decisions that are made by firms on a day-to-day, month-to-month basis. Okay, so as you can see from the slide there, there are lots of decisions that are made. You will make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis um, as a consumer. Okay, whether it's buying a tin of beans or whether you're going to spend your money on a new pair of trainers or whether you're going to go to um, a sporting event or a music event, for instance, you will make decisions that are based upon upon what you want in, to, in, to, in, in your economic wants. Those decisions, when, the, when they're added up across the whole economy, have a big, big effect on firms. They have a big, big effect on the government and our economy and our wealth and our wealth creation. Okay, those that, that is what we look at in terms of um, microeconomics. We also look at how the government might get involved in some of those decisions and try to control the, the economy and how they might try to help us to, to, to move towards um, products and services that the government would like us to consume. More, for example, more healthy options, health options that don't affect the environment. Do we tax you know, products that do affect the environment or do we try to educate people or do we offer subsidies for things that we do want? You know, do we want people to be healthier and fitter? Therefore, do we subsidise gyms and sports centres to try to get people to pay less money and have better access to those kind of facilities? The other side of economics is the bigger side of it, okay? Not the individual and the and the decisions that are made by uh, businesses on a day-to-day, week-to-week businesses, but what are the decisions that are made on a much more economy-wide and international basis? In the economy, the chance of the exchequer, Ricky Sunak at the moment, has to basically try to control our economy and try to put in place and measures that, that, that help the economy to function. In other words, transactions to take place on a day-to-day -day basis, people to be an employed and stay in employment um, over a period of time to create wealth so that that wealth can be distributed. Okay, But in the, the meantime, we're trying to stop inflation from happening and trying to control inflation. Um, but still maintain demand for goods and services in our economy. Um, if you look at the bottom there, higher wages, okay, in terms of the, in terms of the staff and what we get paid, uh, it, and and what businesses can pay and what they've got to pay as well, so that people are going to get at least a minimum wage within a, within our within our economy. Also, we do look at um, external issues as well. So we do import and export, as we said about Brexit. We do import and export goods into and out of this country. Okay, it is important that we try to export goods. 
by exporting goods across the world we are bringing more and more money into this country the goods might go out but the money comes in goods and services leaving money coming in okay so that's a good thing and um, we, we may have to import goods sometimes we maybe we're not as good at, 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 at producing those goods as other countries so therefore we need to get a balance there in terms of what's coming into the country and what's going into ours of the country and throughout all of this hopefully we're going to have an economy we you seem to be fair okay and there's some kind of a distribution of income one of the main ways of distributing income is to pay benefits to people who are entitled to benefits so that might be child benefit it might be related to income it might be related to unemployment to try to distribute so we've got a more equal and fair society okay so that is macroeconomics and that is the bigger decisions that are made within the economy um, on the course then the level economics <clears throat> um, there are three papers as you can see all of the papers are weighted exactly the same so these are at the, tend at the end of two years paper one is your micro paper paper two is a macro paper and paper three looks at issues from both micro and macroeconomics some of the bigger issues and principles um, in the economy so those are equally weighted so overall it's at a 240 the whole a level and they are 80 each so therefore that is the a level economics three exams at the end of two years so two years preparation practice and going through those the, the areas that we need to cover on this and finally facilities trips and events then we do have a number of uh, resources to help you and to support you through the economics. They include class resources which are used in class, okay, to try to make it a little bit more interactive and to help you to practice some of the skills that you need to learn on the economics. We do have uh, easy economics, which is something that you can access from home. It, there are many, many videos on there to, to help to explain some of the concepts that, that, that will be covered in class. But also there are little tests as well. So it's a good um, source of, of information for you and a, and a way to support your learning. We, we use tutor to you resources. Again, they are equally accessible to you as they are to the teachers. Some of the staff will use them within the class as well. Again, there's lots of up-to-date relevant resources there. We do um, a visit. We had a visit last year to Amazon's warehouse in uh, Wakefield. The picture there that you can see the photograph is from that visit, and that visit, in, from an economics point of view, was to look at the um, areas like specialisation and how how staff are used within that organisation and what they specialise in. And is there a division of labour? In other words, do different staff complement each other in what they do? And, and to get the job done efficiently okay and finally we have very strong links with Hull University okay our links with Hull University include visits to Hull University um, speakers um, at Hull University on different economic co uh, concepts and we also have been involved in competitions with Hull University as well okay so there's plenty of links there visits and online resources okay to support you throughout the course Okay, that's a level economics um, and the way it fits into the into the um, department, the faculty. Sorry, the social sciences faculty. And um, what we'll do now is we'll take some questions and answers. So I'll move on to the last slide, and then we'll take some questions and answers if if you have any. <coughs>